I'm a musician, as you can see, my violin is over there. Um, so I'm primarily going to be speaking to musicians um, with arm injuries, but the truth is that this information will be useful for anybody with any injury. So before I go on, I just want to sympathize with everybody out there who is suffering from physical pain, an arm injury such as tendonitis or carpal tunnel syndrome, rotator cuff injuries, all kinds of things that can really strongly impact your experience as a musician. And I know how hard that is. Um, as a musician myself, in the past, I've experienced injury, um, like shooting pain in my left arm that goes up into my pinky and I can't play. Um, that hasn't happened for a very long time because of the things that I've learned over many years and practiced and some of the things I'm going to share with you today. So I would love it if you would say hello. I'm hoping that this live streaming event is working. So if you could just tell me what your instrument is, where you're from, just type something into the comments. Um, I should be on Facebook and YouTube, so I am hoping the comments will come in so that I can make sure that this is actually working. So, hello, and if you're watching the replay also, I'd love to interact with you that way too. So, as we go along, just tell me if this material is resonating for you, share your experience, and if you have questions, I'll do my best to answer, okay? Ah, Kay is here. Hello. Thank you so much for saying hi. Now I feel better because I know this is working. <laughs> There's nothing worse than doing a live video and later you realize that it didn't work and nobody saw it. So thank you, Kay, for saying hello. Glad you're here. Okay, so the problem here is if you are a musician and you have an injury, I mean, it's obvious what the problem is and it feels awful. The problem is you can't play your instrument, or if you can play it, you have pain, it's very uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, and it causes all kinds of emotional challenges that you need to deal with, such as frustration, because you're not able to do the things that you used to do or that you want to be able to do, so your technique is hampered if you're still able to play. Um, but very often you can't play at all and there's nothing more frustrating than watching days, weeks, months perhaps go by without being able to touch your instrument and make music the way you normally do, the way you'd like to. If you're in pain right now, I would love to hear it. So just share in the chat, put a Y for yes or just type in yes, tell me if you want what the issue is, and I would love to you know, relate to you that way. So if you do, if you're a professional, you may be worried about your career. Um, you know, maybe you just fell and something just as a fluke, you broke your arm or something. Uh, but, you know, it can seem like not such a big deal for other people, but as a musician who like depends on your arms and your hands and your fingers for your livelihood, that can be really scary as you worry about your career, not being able to perform. Of course, now we're in the pandemic and nobody's performing. So if you're going to get injured now is probably a better time than other times, although there's never a good time to get injured. But the thing is now during the pandemic, you have a golden opportunity to learn more about what actually happened, what's happening to you and what you can do about it so that at the end of the pandemic, you're going to be much better equipped to take care of yourself, to prevent further injury, and you're going to have this time to heal faster if you take these suggestions I'm going to give you to heart. Hello, Laurel on Facebook. Thank you so much for sharing. You've got tendonitis in your bow arm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's there's nothing worse than experiencing something and tendonitis, something like that, is usually ongoing and recurring and it can get really frustrating. So I feel for you, truly. So other problems with pain is obviously it hurts and it's distracting and you can't play your instrument, but you can't also function in daily life as easily. And in your practicing, if you can play, 
And in daily life, you're always having to find workarounds to do what you usually did without even thinking in a different way to compensate for not being able to use your body in the way that it's designed to use. That can be very painful, frustrating, annoying, and also distracting. It's hard to focus when you're distracted by pain and when you're not being able to get things done quickly the way you used to. So that can build up impatience um, and you might wanna to try to speed up the process and you know everybody wants to speed up healing. That's why you're here, right? The title of this video is How to Heal Faster. There are ways to speed up your healing that I'll share with you, but the way that we usually do that is just kind of trying to push through things and do things sooner than we're actually able to do. So we try to speed up the healing by pretending we're better than we are, and that can actually slow down your healing. Can anybody relate to this, this desire to kind of do things before your body is really ready? Just tell me in the comments, <laughs> because this is common. So I'm gonna give you solutions and talk a little bit more about the problems before I get to the solutions. Um, but before I dive into that, and as you're telling me what your instrument is, where you're from, if you're just joining me, um, just let me know if you're on Facebook or on YouTube. Hello, Robin, I see you're on YouTube. Before I go deep into this material, I just want to let you know who I am if this is your first experience coming into contact with me and my work. I am a professional violinist. I have been my entire life, but I have an unusual background where at age 19, 20, I, you know, I had already played at Carnegie Hall a couple times <laughs> and I had already played as a soloist with international orchestras like the Berlin Symphony, the, the Pittsburgh Symphony. I had already won international competitions. So I was having a career and then life came along and I changed the directions. I also started having pain, but the pain didn't get bad enough really, I didn't pay attention to it enough until a couple decades later, after I'd had kids and got married at 20, unexpectedly, not planning that. Um, but I kind of left my solo career and came back many years later in a roundabout way through pain because I had neck pain and it got to be really frustrating. And finally, I found this magical thing called the Alexander Technique and it just worked wonders. So I got really curious about it and inspired. Um, so I went and did a three year teacher training to get certified in the Alexander Technique. I later got a second certification, which most people don't do. There are probably a handful of people in the world who do that. <laughs> and not only that, and I think I know actually, I am the only person in the world who then has done more than five years of training to teach the Alexander Technique online. It's something called Primal Alexander. So I now perform again, and I just completed my first professional solo recording. It should be out on Spotify um, within the next months. I'm so excited. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I went through this roundabout way of learning about pain as a non-musician because I wasn't really playing much anymore. And now I've kind of wedded my understanding of the mind-body techniques I learned from the Alexander Technique into my experience as a professional musician and having worked with hundreds and hundreds of musicians over many, many years, I've come up with a process called the Art of Freedom Method. This is my unique signature system to help you integrate what's going on with your mind, with what's going on in your body, and what's going on in your musical practice and performance. So I don't want to talk more about myself, except just to tell you that I've been there. I've had the pain, the physical pain. I've had chronic back pain that runs in my family. I don't have it anymore because I know what to do about it. Okay. Hello, Eddie. Eddie says I have thoracic outlet syndrome in both arms. And I see that you have Actually, your picture is so tiny. Um, can you tell me what instrument that is? It looks interesting. It looks like a guitar, but not a guitar. Is it a lute, perhaps? <laughs> Just very curious there. Okay, so let's dive in. The thing is, when you have pain, when you have an arm injury, for example, or any other injury, what happens is that 
your body is crying out for attention, right? If you stub your toe, where does your attention go? Ah, my toe, right? If you have thoracic outlet syndrome, if you have tendinitis, if you have rotator cuff syndrome, where does your attention go? It goes to the screaming pain in your body, right? Yes. The problem here is that what you focus on, you get more of. So when you allow your attention to be sucked into the pain over and over and over again, which probably happens hundreds of times a day when you have acute pain, maybe thousands, I don't know how many times, but can you relate to this? When you have pain or you've had a surgery, maybe your arm is in a sling, how many times a day does your attention get sucked down into your body to kind of magnify that part of your body in your awareness. This is just human nature. This is what happens. The problem is that when you do that, you are not actually getting out of the way of that specific thing that is in your going on in your body. You need to actually expand your awareness and make room for things, your healing energy, your body's natural healing mechanisms to flow and do their healing work. Now, there was a study done in 2011 that I just you know, happened to look up online and quickly found. There was a study done that concludes, the conclusions were that psychological stress and physiological stress leads to clinically relevant delays in wound healing. Okay, so I kind of jumped over to the idea of psychological stress and physiological stress and how those delay healing. Now, what does that have to do with having your attention sucked down into your body? Because the more you pay attention to the pain, the more your body is going to be paying attention to something that's wrong and your sympathetic nervous system is, that's your fight, flight, freeze response, is going to be triggered every single time that you go down there and you have a reaction of a psychological nature, like, like I talked about before, frustration, worry about your career, maybe even guilt that you allowed yourself to get injured <laughs> as if it were your choice, right? You, but you could still feel guilty for not being able to practice, worrying about not practicing and losing skills over time. Worry that maybe you're not healing properly. Maybe there are complications. Maybe you're getting more and more impatient because this is a recurring issue. Maybe you've gone to doctors, you've gotten a surgery, you've gone to chiropractors, you've gone to massage therapists. Maybe you've even tried craniosacral therapy or Alexander Technique lessons and you still have the pain. Can anybody relate to this? It is so common. You go to a specialist of some sort and they help you in a certain sense, but it doesn't really get to the root of the problem, okay? I'm sure you can relate to this. And Eddie, that's a violin. Oh, cool. <laughs> How could I not recognize the violin? <laughs> I think it's your picture. For some, and it's so tiny. For some reason, it looks like this exotic instrument, like a mandolin or not that that's so exotic, but <laughs> to me, it's exotic. It looks like a mandolin or a lute something or something. Okay. So anyway, if you are over-focusing on the problem, you're increasing a stress response, emotional discomfort, and also physiological like uh, physiological, physical discomfort, you're increasing it by focusing on it. So what the heck are you supposed to do? Because how can you not pay attention to pain? Right? I'm not saying, here's the, here's the little subtle thing here. I'm not saying don't pay attention to the pain. I'm saying you need to know what to do when your pain calls your attention. And what usually people do is they go into some sort of thinking spiral that then causes them to pay more attention to the pain and it's just like this this feedback loop where there's pain worry thinking about a potential negative future 
or pain, guilt about past, past stuff and how you you overpracticed and you shouldn't have even though you knew you should even though you knew you shouldn't, you practiced for 8 hours and you pushed through pain and now you got injured. So your mind gets wrapped up in it and when you do that, your stress levels increase and your healing is delayed. The other thing that people tend to do, which I kind of alluded to, is if they have a, a so-called physical problem, and here's a secret, by the way, there is no such thing as a physical problem. What? What, Jennifer? <laughs> no, let me say it again. There is no such thing as a purely physical problem. Yes, I qualified it a little bit. Sure, there are physical problems, but there's no such thing as a purely physical problem. Every physical problem has a mental, psychological, emotional, you could even say spiritual, if you think that way, component. You know why? Because you can't divide yourself up into parts. The mind, the body, the emotions, the soul, it's all you, one thing. And the reason those specialists that you go to can't really help you fundamentally. They can, they can help, you know, they can put your, they can do a surgery and put you in a cast and you will heal, right? But are you healing the issue that created the injury in the first place? And are you really going to be able to practice differently so that you're not re-triggering the injury or exacerbating the things that didn't quite heal properly? You need a system that is going to help you integrate how you're thinking with how you move, what you're feeling in your body, what's happening with you emotionally, and how you approach your instrument. There are no doctors that I know of that teach you how to play your instrument and improve your technique and your musicianship, <laughs> as well as doing a surgery. So it's extremely rare. In fact, I haven't really seen it anywhere. <laughs> Just about. I mean, no. I don't know anybody else on the planet that does exact. There is nobody else on the planet that does exactly what I do, that integrates all of these things. There are people who do similar things, but there's nobody that does exactly what I do. So Somebody is saying, and I am so sorry, I can't see everybody's names. And I don't know why this happens. I can see some people's names like Robin, Kay, and Eddie. And then I see a Facebook user that says, this is so good. Thank you, Facebook user. <laughs> I'm really sorry, I can't call on you by name. Ah, that's annoying. But you know what? I'm gonna put this up here because I like it and because it's a fun little thing that I can do. Okay, the other thing that some people do, and that people usually do, is they realize that having an injury is stressful, so, and they know intuitively that they need to approach it differently. They know that their mind is going a thousand miles an hour and doing circles, and it's negative and not good how they're thinking, so they learn how to meditate. Or maybe they know how to meditate, and so they meditate more often or longer because they know and science has also proven this, that meditation lowers your stress levels. And intuitively, we know that lowering the stress levels promotes healing. It's just true. And it's, there's research on that, like I alluded to. So people try to meditate. They're like, oh, I need to rest more. I need to try to relax. Yes, those things are helpful. And people know they need to take better care of their bodies. Maybe they improve their diet. They do stretches. Stretches are, you have to be really careful with stretches. You have to know how to do that with, in a mind-body way because people can really re-injure themselves without, you know, you can have the best intentions to do stretches really carefully and still re-injure yourself and be clueless about why. But the reason is that you were not approaching it in a way that is easy and integrated. So stretching and exercises, you have to be so careful with. This is one of the things that I teach my coaching clients and my group class students is how to be so present to what's going on that you can catch the warning signs almost immediately They're because they're so subtle and so imperceptible. You want to catch yourself starting to move in a way that is not healthy, that is increasing tension. 
because the other thing that gets in the way of healing is increased tension in your body. So I talked about emotional stuff that increases your stress levels, but you know what? All of those emotional reactions, frustration, impatience, worry, guilt, all those things have a physical component. And you know what that physical com component is called? Tension, <laughs> increased tension. When your emotions and, and your thinking are negative, maybe self-critical, that kind of thinking causes excess tension in the body. And when you have excess tension in the body, that prevents that healing flow that I talked about earlier, and it just slows everything down. You're gonna heal so much slow, more slowly if you have excess tension in your body. Problem is, most people go around life most of the time with excess tension and they don't even know it. Are you one of those people? Yes, you are, because <laughs> everybody does it. We all have more tension than is necessary and we don't even realize it. Excess tension is what gets in the, in the way of your technical progress on your instrument. Maybe you're a very successful professional musician, but you still have a technical limitation, like a wall that you can't get past. And either you just think, well, I'm just never gonna be able to do that. I'm never gonna be able to play Aaron's Rose of Summer <laughs> or those Paganini Caprices, they're just, that's not in my cards, it's not in my destiny. Either you'll just kind of give up and just assume that that's not for you, you're never gonna be able to do it. Or it's like you push and push and push and push to break through those barriers, but the way you do it is by increasing tension, which just makes the barriers thicker and stronger. So excess tension causes those blockages in your technique and excess tension prevents your best musical expression, your most spontaneous creative self from doing what it naturally wants to do, which is share your art from your heart and touch your audiences, move them, be moved yourself, enjoy your performance, help your students from the heart so that they can get excited and enthusiastic about performing and practicing and all those things. It's gotta have this juicy, like, passionate quality that you can just let out. If you have excess tension in your body, you will come up against that time and time and time and time again, and you'll be frustrated because you'll be on stage and you'll get a little nervous and you won't be able to do things spontaneously and freely the way you want. Can you relate to that? Okay, so here I'm talking about what goes on as a result of injury mentally, emotionally, how you react to injury that slows down healing. I've talked about what goes on in the body. Your excess tension slows down your natural healing mechanisms and all that stress and tension and anxiety gets in the way of your best music making. To say nothing of if you have your arm in a sling or you're have, you have so much pain you can't even play your violin or your piano or your lute or whatever your instrument is, you just can't even play. That is a real challenge when you can't even play because you may be doing the best things for your mental state, the best things to promote your physical health and your, your bodily well-being and your healing. But if you can't practice, how is that affecting you? If you can't touch your instrument, you can't do your scales and etudes, and you can't work on that piece that you love, and you hear music on the radio that excites you, and you can't practice, how does that affect your mental, emotional, and therefore physical state? It does. So the Alexander technique, I just love it. But in my opinion, it's like you need even more than that because you need to be able to put it into the context of the injury and how you practice, how you approach your instrument and like how you organize your life. So the art of freedom method that I've developed, I call it the art of freedom method for conscious living and masterful artistry where you learn how to integrate the five life pillars, which are purpose, 
You need to know why. Why are you here? Why are you a musician? Why are you frustrated that you can't practice? You have to know the why, the deep, deep, deep why to really promote maximum fast healing. I am a firm believer in knowing your purpose. And if you don't know why, then you really need to work with me because <laughs> I can help you get to your why. I love to do that. I, I love inspiration and helping people get inspired. So you need to know your purpose. You need to know your mind. You need to have control over your mind, your mental state, what you're thinking. You need to know what you're thinking so that you can change your thinking to get different results. If you're thinking negatively, you need to observe yourself. You need to know how to do that. How are you going to know what's happening in your body as a result of your negative self-critical thinking? You have those. So that brings me to the third pillar. You need to know how that mind is connected to your body. We have purpose, mind, body, and then spirit. Now, if you are a believer, you could call that God. It's your relationship with God. But even if you're an atheist, think of it as love, creative spirit. We all can agree that we have that heart passion that gets, makes us want to wake up in the morning and do what it is that we love to do. So love, spirit, that is the fourth pillar. And then the fifth one is your artistry. And that is the technical skills you need, the musical skills you need, knowing what you're doing with your whole self as you're looking at the music. Are you getting tight as you're trying to see it? And is that impeding your performance? Are you reacting to seeing the audience? Does having that certain person out there in the audience freak you out and cause you to go into a startle and that affects your performance? How long do you practice? This is a great question. I am a firm believer in qu quality over quantity. You do not need to practice a long time in order to get ahead very quickly if you know how to practice in an integrated way. So. Those are my five pillars of the Art of Freedom Method for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry. I would love to hear back from you now. Do the things that I've been saying make sense to you? Just type in yes, or if you're on your phone, just hit Y for yes. <laughs> or if it doesn't make sense, tell me and hit no. <laughs> Put a hit, hit N for no. Um, and I'd love to hear about what, you know, if you've had an insight and you have a moment to just type in what the insight was from watching today, that would be lovely. And if you're on YouTube, I would love your comments and your reactions to this. Vong is here. Hello on YouTube. Vong says yes. I'm so glad. That is great. Okay, so last but not least, I want to give you a practical suggestion. Um, you need a method. You need something that is fast, it's quick and easy and simple, and you can do it right away without your instrument. Um, it is so I'm going to just share. I'm going to share the first thing that I teach any student. Okay, it's called ima, which means now in Japanese. And I'm just going to give you the tiniest taste of this. And by the way, Ima is a primal Alexander etude. Primal Alexander is a hands-free method of teaching the Alexander technique, which I alluded to earlier. I said I've done more than five years of training in teaching the Alexander technique hands-free. I've been teaching exclusively online since 2018. I'm not here because of the pandemic. This is what I love to do because it works and people who come across my teachings, learn from day one how to do it for themselves because there are no hands touching them. I feel like it works faster and better, and that's why I do it. That's Primal Alexander. So, and Primal Alexander is this hands-free method of teaching developed by Mio Morales, who happens to also be my partner. And so it's just, I'm telling you this because it works and because the thing I'm gonna teach you right now, Ima is the very first Primal Alexander Alexander Etude. Because the very first thing you need to know how to do is start connecting 
you're or to start coming in and becoming able to distinguish in yourself between relative tension and relative ease or comfort. So right now, as you're sitting there, if you want to try this out with me, do you want to try this out? Yes. Give me a thumbs up if you want to try this out. <laughs> okay. It's very, 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 very simple. All I want you to do, to do right now is to pause for a moment and check in with yourself as you're sitting there. Just take a moment to get curious. Ask yourself, what am I noticing about my body right now? And if you feel like it, type it into the comments. It's always fun to see various experiences because everybody's different. What are you noticing about your body right now? Now, if you're in pain or recovering from an injury, and we've been talking a lot about pain and injury, it's quite possible that your attention went immediately to your injury, your pain, your discomfort. So I want you to notice that, but don't stay there. This is, this is so important if you just learn this today. It's like if you get one thing, I want it to be this. If you notice pain, immediately get curious about what else you notice in your body. Ask yourself now, what else do I notice? And get curious, do that inner body scan what are you noticing now? Now, sometimes your, your attention is going to go straight back to the same place, if you're, especially if you're in pain. That's okay. Just ask again. Now, because remember, ima means now. So we're starting to really come into the present moment with curiosity and attention to what's coming up for you right now. And now, what do I notice? And now, what do I notice? And I started noticing some little funny twinge thing on my left side. And now, okay. So once you can do that, now get curious. Ask yourself, is there a place in my body right now where there's just a little bit less pain or less tension or less discomfort. You know, if you were going to rate pain or discomfort on a scale of one to 100, you know, if your injury, your pain is at a 100, and I really hope it isn't, and I'm sorry if it is, <laughs> but if your number is like way up there, can you find a place in your body that's like two or five numbers lower, like just a little tiny bit less pain or less tension. Good. So once you can do that, and this might take practice, oh, this will for sure take practice for everybody. For some people, this is easy. For some people, it's not. So then you practice it. But I guarantee you, I promise, if you do this a few times a day, you just stop what you're doing, you check in, and you ask yourself, what am I noticing right now? And now. And now. And then you shift over to, well, where is there just a little bit less pain, a little bit less tension? Once you can start doing that easily, you can also then, and maybe if that was already too easy to begin with, you want to start asking yourself, where in my body do I notice just a little bit of easing right now? Where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Now, if you're with me, if you're still with me and you're finding this interesting, if I were you, I would write down these words right now because this phrase is, it's like a magic phrase that the specific words I am giving you are very important. Don't improvise with these words. Don't substitute. Don't make up your own phrase. You can, you know, if you worked with me, you could do that much later. 
because nothing is set in stone and everything's in flux. But for now, if you're just watching this YouTube or Facebook video, write these words down. Where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Again, do not shorten, do not change it. Write down these exact words, keep it somewhere where you can remind yourself to stop and ask yourself this and find out what happens. Okay, so this is just a tiny, tiny, tiny little introduction to the world of my teaching with the Art of Freedom Method for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry, which is based on the principles of the Alexander Technique. I use Primal Alexander hands-free teaching over the internet, and I incorporate like cutting edge practice techniques no matter what your instrument is. And above all, <clears throat> what this does, <coughs> excuse me, is it gives you super simple, easy, practical, and highly, highly effective tools to integrate your mind, your body, your emotions, your soul, your spirit, your love, your passion, your purpose with how you think about your instrument, how you approach your instrument, how you move and play with your instrument so that my students come to me with pain issues, excess tension issues, performance anxiety issues, technical skills related issues. Everybody that works with me wants to improve something. And this is a really simple, effective, powerful, fast way to heal and improve both your life and your music making. I have a coaching program. I do private coaching and I do group classes. It's all online. And the coaching program is by application. It's called The Musician's Advantage. And if you're curious at all about working with me one-on-one -on -one so that I can help you move really quickly through this process and get all the benefits that I've talked about, just you know send me a comment say hey jennifer can you tell me a little more i'm interested in your coaching program or if you're on facebook send me a private message or just comment here on the video you know where to find me just ask me and we can have a conversation about options i also have a group program that is for musicians of all kinds um, if you're an amateur that would be the way to start and it's also for professionals, but the best way for a professional to really get the full benefit of what I can help you with would be the private coaching. So I strongly urge you to just reach out to me in whatever way is easy for you and just ask me about what's possible. I would love to talk with you. I do have a special offer that is going on now through the end of January, but if you're watching this later and January is long gone, reach out to me anyway, because I always have some kind of a special offer going on. Usually it's per month and I just change it up. Um, sometimes it's a really big discount. Sometimes it's extra self-study courses that I throw in there, but there's always something special. Um, but you're going to want the one in January. <laughs> so if you're curious, you want to get started, just reach out to me. You know where to find me. And I'm just going to hop over to the comments and see if there are any questions here before I finish up. Um, here's a funny question. Can you play Por Una Cabeza? <laughs> Actually, my son plays that. He used to play that with his violin group. Um, I've never played it myself. Um, maybe someday I will. But if you're curious about gypsy jazz, go to my YouTube channel and look up my violin performances. And by the way, if you would all subscribe to my channel, that is so helpful for me. And join my Facebook group if you're not a member yet. It's called The Musician's Advantage. It's free and there's a ton of useful stuff that's in the Facebook, Facebook group for people who join. Get on my mailing list, you know, all that. I'm always giving stuff. So you wanna get on my mail, mailing list and find out about my next videos and all that. But I was just going to say, I have a playlist of my violin performances. If you want to hear me play some gypsy jazz, I experimented with that uh, a couple years ago and had a lot of fun with that. So 
but there's no por una cabeza. <laughs> Uh, here's someone is saying, and I'm sorry, your name isn't showing up for me for some weird reason, but Facebook user says, I am definitely benefiting from having started the Art of Freedom course. Yes. And learning the Alexander technique. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, whoever you are. I wish I could see your name to thank you. but <laughs> I really appreciate it. I love all of my students. So it just warms my heart to see them improving, making progress. I have a couple students in my program right now whose doctors, both of them, doctors told them they would always be in pain. They would never be cured of what they had. One was scoliosis, another one, fib uh, chronic pain, um, fibromyalgia, that, you know, those types of things, and also like crushed vertebrae. I mean, serious, serious pain issues. Both of those students now are pain free most of the time. And a lot, of, yeah, and they know what to do if the pain comes back so that they can release it. So just saying, <laughs> nobody's beyond hope. Robin says, I'm working on observing what feels calming. Yes. So after a student has learned how to do EMA, which is a little practical exercise that I gave each of you here today, I teach them something called the cycle. And there's also a tutorial video of that for the public on YouTube. Just just Google my name, not Google, YouTube search my name, Jennifer Roach Francoli, and The Cycle, and that video should pop up for you. It's also a video called, uh, I think it's like Relaxation for Musicians or something. So you can just search that and my name. That is going to teach you how to do a two minute practice that is so powerful. Do it twice a day. You can do my free five day challenge to make that a habit. The information is there in the description of the video. So that's great, Robin. Robin also says, one way that I can tell listening to music is partly a mental form of practice, yes, is that when I hear the music I love, I feel the muscle discomfort increase as if I were playing. Oh my gosh, Robin, you're my student. You need to bring this up with me in class and we need to talk about that because that is so brilliant that you're noticing that and I'm going to teach you what to do about it. Okay, so come to my class and bring it to my class. You can even post it in our private Facebook group if you want. And for everybody here, we have an amazing international community of musicians. So if you also want community that is really passionate about learning and making great music with ease and fun and getting over pain, performance anxiety, all that kind of stuff, just ask me because I have the most, I have the most amazing group. It's a really wonderful, heart-centered group of people from around the world, um, just really special people. So especially during the pandemic, when we're all in need of community, you've got to try, you know, look at, look up my community. We are, it's called Alexander Musicians. Um, actually, I didn't mean look it up because there isn't any material out there where you can look it up, but contact me if you want to be part of an amazing community. And Farhad, hello, hello, hello. Okay. Great. Um, Robin says, we'll do. Wonderful. Robin says, I have started the course and I'm enjoying it. That is great. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> All right. I, this video has gone on for a while. I think it's time to stop. I hope this was useful for everybody. Um, again, tell me in the comments what stood out for you. Um, maybe you had an aha moment and please share this video. Okay. People are in pain. Way too many musicians have pain. So if you know anybody or you're in a musical group on Facebook or, you know, you have students, maybe you're a teacher, you have students in pain or you have colleagues in pain, I'd be so grateful if you would share this video with the people that you know to help benefit them. Okay. The more people know about this work, the better. So thank you for being here today and be well. Practice EMA and contact me if you want to learn more. Lots of love. Bye-bye.